Hi guys, allow me to demonstrate something that's been driving me absolutely crazy today. And I hope I can reproduce the madness. So, here we go. I've got a database. I have a field there with Epoch Time that I'm updating. I have um, a handler, which updates that with Epoch Time, and then it sleeps. So the whole thing should take about six seconds, not including the initial time it takes to connect to the database. And then timeout is set at the default 15 seconds. Okay, so let's just run it. Let's run it. It's already been deployed. So it should end, it should calls into the API gateway. And it's a 200 and this value, as you can see, is updated. Fantastic. Now, let's go back into it. Let's change the, um, the timeout to maybe four seconds. So now this um, Golang Lambda function is going to be interrupted, right? Let's go, you see it was saying no TX 15 seconds time like that. So here we go, here we go, here we go. 502, it was interrupted. Is this updated? I don't know, have a think. Yes, it is updated. That's bad because if your Lambda function, um, I mean, no, no Lambda function, I mean, no SQL thing should take more than 15 seconds, but if you're doing a lot, maybe it does, and if it gets cut, ooh, then we're in trouble, aren't we? Some things are done, some things aren't. Um, so here comes the solution, I think. Uh, let me uh, check out. Master. So I have um, a version now that uses begin and commit and rolls back if it doesn't work. So let's just, for sanity reasons, um, put in here like uh, with transactions, 15 second timeout. up deploy so this should update when it's run oops curl should be a 200 200 this should be updated yes it is now let us Reduce this to four seconds. So it shouldn't, as you remember, sleeping for five seconds, it shouldn't finish um, in four seconds time. And four seconds time up. This is the logs on the right hand side here. You can see the last run was uh, 15 seconds, which went fine. Uh, okay, deploy. So it ends in two, three, one. Let's do a curl. Timeout of four seconds. So it should end in a five or two. It should have failed to update. As you can see, it has failed to update. So the transaction worked. So I have been getting some funny non reproducible results here. But this is right. This is right. It shouldn't update this value when it's in a transaction and the, the function got killed. So this is good. So this, I mean, I guess the conclusion here is that you really need to use uh, transactions when, you, when you're working with lambdas, uh, with AWS Lambda and, and RDS Aurora. So let's just go ramp it up to seven seconds. This should be enough to work now. This should have enough time to complete. Seven seconds should be enough. Um, this should be 200. It's 
Farbe Tüchter. Okay, um, you see what I mean? This, I, I'm having these really strange issues where it just. Okay, let's just give it more time. Let's give it ten seconds. I'm getting these issues when I deploy it. But my point is, I think transactions the way to go. I'll I'll, put, I'll link to the the code below. And hopefully um, you can critique it. So I'm at work now. I'm going to try and modify my database execs so that they're transactional. So that so that uh, if they don't finish, if they don't finish, it doesn't update. This shouldn't have updated. Wow. Be very very careful, guys, with with doing database stuff and and lambdas. Lambdas can get killed at any point in time. And that is a very, very painful place to be. You gotta bear in mind that a cold Lambda takes several seconds to, to connect to the Aurora database sometimes. You know, we, we did 15 seconds to begin with, didn't we? Still 502. Unbelievable. This is what I mean by driving me crazy. Um, yeah, I did. We did 15 seconds earlier, and now I'm doing 50 seconds. 15 seconds again. It's not working. Bizarro. Absolutely bizarre. Crazy. Comments below. Comments below. Oh my god. Still, I think transactions the way to go.